Hi guys, this is going to be a video introducing inductors and how they work in DC circuits. Uh, inductors work opposite to how capacitors work. So I thought to introduce inductors it would be a good idea to just quickly review how capacitors work and then that would be a good transition to introducing inductors. So from the last video we saw that at the instant the switch is closed the voltage drop across the capacitor is zero volts. It acts as a short, as a short circuit. After the five time constants have expired, the capacitor is said to be fully charged at a voltage equal to the power supply, and in this case it would be 20 volts. So the time constant is R times C, the resistance times the capacitance, in this diagram equal to 10 seconds. So after five times that 10 seconds, 50 seconds, it will be at steady state fully charged at 20 volts. Inductors work in the opposite manner. The initial voltage drop across an inductor when the circuit is closed is going to equal the voltage of the power supply. So in this case the power supply is 20 volts at time zero when the circuit is just closed, when the switch has just been closed, the voltage across the inductor is going to be 20 volts right here. After five time constants have expired the voltage is going to drop down to zero. So remember this would be opposite from a capacitor. A capacitor starts at zero volts after five time constants goes up to E volts, the voltage of the power supply. With inductors it's the opposite. It starts at full voltage E from the power supply, drops down to zero volts after five time constants. The time constant equation is L over R, where L is the inductance in units Henry's. In this circuit time constant is 100 henrys over 100 kiloohms giving a 1 millisecond time constant or a steady state after 5 milliseconds so in the first instance in the first case with capacitors voltage started off at 0 rose to 20 with inductors it starts at 20 drops down to 0 but what about current how does current behave in those two examples using an inductor and a capacitor? Well, going back to the first diagram with a 100 microfarad capacitor, in the initial instant that the circuit is closed, there's going to be a 0 volt drop across the capacitor, rising up to a 20 volt drop across the capacitor after five time constants have expired. What's the current at instant 0 and at instant five time constants. Well at time zero there's not going to be any voltage resisting the voltage across the power supply. So current is going to flow at its max at time zero, the instant the switch is closed. And we can figure out the current using Ohm's law V equals IR, rearranging to solve for I V over R. That's where we get this right here. E is the voltage across the power supply. R is the resistance right here. Doing the calculations, we get an initial current the instant the switch is closed of 0.2 milliamps through the circuit. That's the maximum current it's going to be because as the capacitor begins to charge, it begins to build up a resistant voltage to the power supply. So after five time constants have expired, after the capacitor has been fully charged, there's going to be 20 volts resisting the 20 volts from the power supply. So if you have 20 volts on pushing in this direction from the power supply, and now a 20 volts pushing this direction from the capacitor 
it's going to equalize and you're not going to get any current flow. So after five time constants, the capacitor is charged and because it's charged, the voltage from the left and the voltage from the right are going to clash together and result in zero current flow. So just to recap, in a simple circuit with one capacitor, at time zero, in the very instant the switch is closed, it's going to be zero volts rising to 20 volts. The current similarly is going to start at its maximum of E over R, dropping down to zero after the five time constants have expired due to this increased resistance voltage from the capacitor. What about in the case of an inductor? How would current flow at time zero and time five time constants if you had an, an, an inductor in the circuit rather than a capacitor? Well, it's going to operate in exactly the opposite. The initial starting voltage at time zero across an inductor is going to equal the voltage of the power supply, in this case 20 volts. And as the five time constants proceed, that voltage difference is going to drop to zero. So at time zero, there's going to be an equal voltage to the power supply in the inductor resulting in no current flow. So at time zero, this inductor here is going to have 20 volts across it. And 20 volts from one direction, 20 volts from the other is going to result in no current flow. After the five time constants have expired, this inductor will now be zero volts. It will have a zero volt drop across it, resulting in maximum current defined by this equation here, where you have E over R. So you see how the behavior of an inductor is very similar to that of a capacitor, except it's just opposite, where the capacitor starts off as if it were a short, and then after five time constants acts as an open circuit, so that no current will flow after the five time constants. Inductors operate oppositely, where the initial voltage across an inductor is the maximum it can possibly be, dropping down to zero after five time constants. So bringing it all together, capacitors as compared to inductors, capacitors start as a short circuit, after five time constants they act as an open circuit, they're measured in farads, and the charging voltage rises from zero to E volts after five time constants. The current flowing in the circuit will drop from its maximum down to zero as the capacitor charges. And finally, the time constant to define how long that takes is R times C. Inductors act as an open circuit, so you get maximum voltage across the inductor at time zero, and after five time constants, they would then act as a short circuit where there would be no voltage across that inductor and the maximum current would be allowed to flow in the circuit. Inductors are measured in Henry's. The charging voltage, as I said, drops, goes from maximum to zero, resulting in a current which rises from zero to its maximum. And finally, the time constant of an inductor is L over R, where L is the measure of the inductor in unit Henry's. So that wraps up the introduction to inductors in simple DC circuits. The part two of this video is going to look at how inductors act in that intermediate time between time zero and time five constants.